In this video, we consider the use of decision trees to help us make staged decisions and to calculate the value of imperfect information such as market research. A decision tree is a visual representation of a set of interrelated decisions that shows the reader a path through from one decision to the next. Let us consider a simple example. Jack is considering opening another sandwich shop. He thinks from experience there will be a 40% chance that the new shop will succeed, in which case it will be worth $1.1 million. If he launches a new shop, but it's ultimately unsuccessful, it will lose him $700,000. He could, of course, decide to do nothing. He could firstly draw this out as a decision tree. Let's assume for these purposes Jack is risk neutral. Decision trees are drawn and read from left to right. A square node means a decision needs to be made. The decision maker can choose which route to go down from that node. In other words, Jack can decide whether to launch or not. A circular node is down to chance. Reading from left to right, we can see Jack initially has a choice of whether to launch or not. If he doesn't launch, his return is nil. If he does, then it's down to chance. This takes him to node B. There's a 40% chance of success and a 60% chance of failure. We calculate decision trees from right to left. So the first node that we would assess is node B. At a chance node, we calculate expected value. In other words, 40% times 1.1 million plus 60% times negative 700,000 is $20,000 positive. Rolling back to node A, Jack has a decision to make. He can choose which leg to go down and he'll choose the leg with the highest value associated with it. If he launches, it will be worth the 20,000 at no day on average. If he doesn't, he'll get nil. So based on expected values, he will launch. This is a very simple example and can be extended so that one decision leads on to the next, but the principle is the same. Draw the stages out from left to right and calculate from right to left. At a chance node, calculate an expected value. At a decision node, choose the route with the highest expected value. Often in questions, the option will be given to undertake further research before committing. Typically, this research is imperfect. In other words, it reduces uncertainty but doesn't eliminate it, such as market research. Jack, for example, might consider undertaking market research before committing to opening his new shop. Although market research is not guaranteed to be absolutely accurate, good market research will give you a strong indication. So, early on in the decision-making process, there may be a choice, so springing from a decision node, of whether to do market research or not. As always, the decision path with the highest value should be chosen. If the path with research is higher than without research, then this additional value can be attributed to the imperfect information generated by the research itself. It is the value of that information over and above the price paid for it. This approach can help us, for example, to determine the maximum we will be prepared to pay for that information. Decision trees are useful as they help us to structure our thoughts and give clarity to a staged process. However, in the main, we're assuming there are limited options at each point, otherwise the tree becomes unwieldy. We know the probabilities and possibilities and are happy making decisions based on expected values. This latter assumption presumes we are therefore risk neutral. In reality, these points restrict the usefulness of decision trees and these points should be noted in your exam if called upon to criticise decision trees as a technique.